final feature I'm going to talk about is the intelligent discrete softening method. It's a material degradation algorithm that reduces many of the common problems uh, associated with progressive failure analysis. It has robust convergence characteristics and reduces solution mesh dependence. The robust convergence characteristics of the intelligent discrete softening method are perhaps one of the biggest advantages of Helios MCT. On the left here, I have uh, output from a typical STA file, MCT. The Helios MCT results are under the blue here, and a hashing damage evolution run is under the red. You can see early on in the, in the analysis, the increment time is the same, but as soon as damage initiation starts, the hashing damage evolution uh, model requires the increment time to cut back and reduce time several times before it finds a solution. This is not required with Helios MTT. Helios MTT does add 2 to 3 percent runtime for a single increment, but you can avoid tiny increments and multiple cutbacks. Helios MTT also eliminates the need for stabilization, thus reducing runtime in many cases. Next, I have two examples of the reduction in mesh dependence provided by Helios MCT. Here I have an open hole tension specimen. I've got three different mesh densities ranging from 8,000 elements to 32,000 elements. Uh, the peak uh, linear elastic stress difference between the, the coarse mesh and the fine mesh is 5%. But as you can see from the load displacement curve here, where the the curve goes vertical for each specimen. That signifies ultimate failure. The, the difference in ultimate failure between the three specimens is only 3.5%. And here I have uh, quasi-isotropic cruciform specimens. I have four different mesh densities ranging from 266 elements to 2,800 elements. The peak difference in linear elastic stress between the, the fine mesh and the coarse mesh was 20%, um, but the peak ultimate failure prediction in the, the highest ultimate failure prediction in any of these load cases was only 11%. And you can see that's well within the scatter of the experimental data. I'm going to finish up with three application examples. The first is an unlined uh, compos all composite pressure vessel, and this is going to highlight the importance of capturing the thermal mechanical interaction. In the experiment, six of these softball-sized tanks were submerged in liquid nitrogen and pressurized until failure. Experimentally, the mean leak pressure of the tanks was 1,233 PSI, and the Helios MCT analysis predicted 1,215 PSI, within a percent and a half. The location was also predicted correctly using Helios MCT. You can see at the bottom here, on the right, I have a post-test procedure for leak de detection. You can see bubbles coming through the wall of the tank, and the contour plot shows the crack saturation prediction. Traditional analysis overpredicts this failure by more than 100%. But if you think back to the simple example of the unconstrained cooling of the unidirectional composite that I presented earlier, uh, the, the fact that the traditional analysis neglects these interactions is why it can't capture, realistically simulate what's going on. And, in this experiment. The next uh, example is a large composite space structure, an interstage adapter. It's got carbon epoxy face sheets and an aluminum honeycomb core, and this structure was about the size of a Volkswagen bug. The loading here is a linear scaling of the worst case flight conditions. Prior to the test, Healy's MCT was used to analyze the failure test of this interstage adapter, and I'll show the results in this video here. Blue here is no failure. Green signifies matrix failure, and red is fiber failure. Then fiber failure. Here's a load displacement plot for the interstage adapter. The first thing you want to notice here is that the response of the structure is linear up until failure. Experimentally, it failed at 183, and Helios MCT predicted a failure at 187. So if the response of the structure is linear, why should you care about progressive failure analysis? Well, the Helios MCT analysis predicted a first local matrix failure at 110, 
and this matrix failure causes stress, local stress redistribution, which then allows realistic simulation of the failure of the structure. You can see the Hashin, Saiwu, and Max stress don't capture this stress redistribution and thus can't accurately predict the failure of the interstage adapter. The final ex uh, example I'm going to show is Casper, which I showed in the beginning. Uh, Casper is uh, about the size of a love seed and has thick all composite construction. Again here the loading was a linear scaling of the worst case flight conditions. Here's a movie of the Casper failure progression. It's much different than in the interstage adapter, uh, it has a long, drawn-out process. You can see toward the vent hole. In the experiment, you tearing out of the vent hole, just like in the displacement plot of the Casper analysis in exper and experiment. You, the Hashim damage evolution model uh, predicted a linear response out to 1950 where uh, ultimate failure was predicted. In the experiment, initial failure happened at 230. Helios MCT predicted initial matrix failure at 260. Um, then you can notice the, the nonlinearity in the blue curve here, and that is due to damage accumulation and global softening of the model. Uh, Casper collapsed at 847. And Helios MCT predicted a collapse at 980, um, which is very good for this highly nonlinear problem. There will be uh, a full case study for all three of these examples. is available at www.fireholetech.com slash abacus slash. So that was a rundown of, of Helios MCT. Um, as I said, go to this website. There will be more information for you, and you can request a a no-cost evaluation or give me a call at 307-460-0476L at emmett, e -M -M -E -T -T, at fireholetech.com.